Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. Folks, it's a beautiful day here in Oregon, in the state of Oregon today. I mean, it's just beautiful. And I I tell you, I just, I, I just don't know what to say anymore about that piece. But anyway, we've got quite a show today, and, and uh, I'm really excited about uh, the two gentlemen that are on here with me today. Uh, they, bring, they bring such a, a background of history, if you will, not only in the state of Oregon, but we even got a little, a little aspect from a national perspective. And uh, my, my, as you note, um, Mr. Juneteenth, you know, June is, Juneteenth is right in our air. It's been an event here in Oregon for a number of years. And I've got with me probably one of the hardest working guy in this arena for years. And has always maintained, if you will, the fact that that, 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 was, that history needs to be communicated to the community at large. It's been something that has been lacking. And in fact, what I will make a point, he's also he tried to, uh, make, to get that uh, included into the school system. Because often we, we're having these various events. It's an ongoing, ongoing basis and whatever, i.e. Well, Black History Month, Juneteenth, and this, that, and the other. But in all due respect, after, after a few days afterwards, people forget. But if they did it in the schools like he tried to do, by the way, he tried to basically get it into the school system, then all of a sudden it becomes part of the history, and then people will recognize, uh, uh, in all due respect, African Americans are recognized throughout this history. It's very, very important. Uh, unlike other, uh, in all due respect, in the Caucasian, European uh, uh, background, history, their history is talked about on a daily basis in our school system. And so that's why we, don't, we, we know all about the various, uh, i.e., uh, marquees and this, that, and other as it relates to uh, Europeans, but we just don't know enough of And right up front, the Europeans don't know that much about African Americans. So that's very important, and that's something that, in all due respect, I plan to lobby for in the, in the legislature this time around to see if we can get it in the schools on an ongoing basis. And in that way, you know, it's going to talk about inclusion because, as you know, we've got the Alabama march right now. That's a big hi historical piece. We've got the whole issue with police and this, that, and the other. And it's always this black and white type situation. We've got to be talking about inclusion. And so I just wanted to make that little point on the front end of it to let you know why we're having this show today the way we're having it today. Again, like I said, we've got Mr. Juneteenth here with us. And we've got um, uh, another gentleman here, Jay Lynch Bay who has a, also has a show here at, uh, at Cable Access, and um, it, it's, it's called Moorish Vice. Voice. Voice. Moorish Voice. It's a very interesting, the interesting thing about him, he comes from D.C., and he's from D.C., and boy, I tell you, he's got, some, he's got info about D.C. I mean, if, when you think about history of black folks, a lot of times you think about the South, but when you think about D.C., it's all. It's all totally inclusion. I mean, you've got folks across the board, if you will. And, um, and I, the interesting thing about him, we're going to have something very interesting that we're going to throw an excerpt, if you will, of. And uh, you might have heard about Marion Berry. Probably the only thing we've heard about him here in the Pacific Northwest is about the cocaine or this, that, and the other. But you, you don't really know the facts about what happened to Marion Berry. And the reason why I'm bringing that point up and possibly doing a little piece on Marion Berry at this point in time, you know, we're right in the midst, if you will, of the transition of former Governor Kitzhopper. John Kitzhopper, who basically was kind of like left in, in, in embarrassment, if you will, and basically, you know, uh, we went through this whole business of well, what can we do to get rid of him. But, you know, in all due respect, folks, this man had already served three terms as governor. Mm -hmm. He had to have done something right. Absolutely. And then, then now all of a sudden, you know, he, you know he's, he brings this young woman here on, on the table, and he basically says, I'm going to keep my lady. That's basically what the deal is. I'm just being straight up with you, okay? And the fact of the matter is, is that uh, he did not want to run this time around. So, uh, you know, so you ask yourself the question, why are we spending so much time trying to degrade the man? I mean, sure, I mean, I can, I can easily do that. I mean, the press did that the whole nine yards. In fact, I'm, I'm remi reminded of Bob Packwood when, when he had his issue, and the media held off until he got elected. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he left, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, the, the other gentleman, all of a sudden, uh, he could have been elected, and been, a, been a different different day, just like Dennis would have been elected had that whole story come out on the front end. Then it wouldn't have been an embarrassment, if you will, on John Kitzhopper because it wouldn't even be an issue. It wouldn't be an issue. He would not have. He would not have gone governorship, and his name would have been. He would have just been out and, and enjoy his retirement accordingly. I mean, I'm not. You know, bottom line. Let, let's be straight up about this whole piece, okay? So anyway, I'm going to show you a guy through D.C. with Marion Barry, 
who basically was, was thrown out of uh, the mayorship of the town, got caught uh, the federal deal, went to, went, to, went to the pen, but he got out and got reelected right. as a councilman. And, you know, and right in front with you, I thought it would be a very appropriate, if you will, to kind of talk about, show a comparison, if you will, of two people who had served the people, one of which is, is kind of like in disgrace at this point in time. But I thought it was a very timely piece. And we're going to show, uh, show a piece of, uh, on Marion Barry's history, life history. we got about two hours of it, but we're going to probably serve, show about 30 minutes of it to start with. And then um, uh, we're going to probably go on the Moorish Moorish. Vice voice. voice on the on uh, uh, on on the uh, Jay Lynch Bay show the uh, next week we'll probably put something together next week like that and we'll have a discussion and so I'm gonna I'm glad to have both of these gentlemen here uh, because uh, like Woody like me I mean unlike unlike um, Jay Lynch who Bay. was in Bay who was in 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 D.C. Uh, we now going to be getting the facts, a little bit of facts. Yes, sir. So that's what we're going to do uh, as part and parcel of the show. But in addition to that, uh, what we're gonna, we want we want to do at this point in time is that um, I want to make sure that we, uh, we 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 get ready to go into Juneteenth, and I want to make sure we give uh, Woody an opportunity to educate us a bit about the up some upcoming events on Juneteenth. As you know, there are other activities running around in the area, and too often we tend to tend to point fingers about being negative about various groups or whatever about this. Look, it's, it's all, we're all together. There's a history there. There's a very rich history, and the community needs to know that should be involved uh, across the board. Uh, I have been a, a, a strong participant, like Woody. I have been a strong participant of the normal Ju Juneteenth thing. I brought the military over there and the Marine Corps and the flag and this, that, and the other, and, and uh, got, tried to get more, in all due respect, uh, 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 Europeans involved in the, in the process. And I think that people need to know that. We need to get more involved in, the, in this whole process. It's not just a black thing. That's right. And because even if I, I'm a, I'm a lifetime member as a Buffalo soldier, a former Marine, and, uh, and a lot of folks didn't know that. And we educated folks about the fact that uh, Buffalo soldiers were not just all black, they were white too. Because in order to be an officer in the military during that particular time, you had to be a Caucasian, white. So they are Buffalo soldiers too. A lot of folks didn't realize that. So, so the fact of me, that was part of the education process that we had. And Woody was also a part of that process, went to D.C., went to the whole nine yard. And there's a, so it's an educational process. We, we're working hard all together. So, but this time around, I'm not going to be a part of that process. Uh, someone else is going to come out. Hopefully, Bernie Foss is going to be doing. It seems as though they got involved in the last, in the last uh, Juneteenth situation. And so he's going to be a part of that, that point. And hopefully, they'll keep on doing what they have to do. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, I'm going to be doing something else, like I'm doing now, and that is supporting uh, Woody and the events that he's in, in the process of putting that team together. So it's all in all. You know, we need to educate the community at large. And we're going to do, and I'm going to do everything that I can to make sure I get that point across. Fair? Okay. So with that, Woody's got, a, Woody's got the event, his event going to be coming up during that Juneteenth situation, and we're going to give him the opportunity to articulate what it's, what it's about, where it's going to be, Woody, some of the participants, and, you know, hey, I'm there. Go on, right. Woody. Talk good, to us. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, just to give you an, an, some information that you just have to know, number one, we are not in contention with any other uh, celebration of Juneteenth. As a matter of fact, my purpose for being involved was to expand the concept so that people celebrated in the park, people celebrated in the closet, people celebrated at home. People celebrated throughout the community in the way that it's comfortable for them to celebrate. However, we also realized that over the years that the Juneteenth needed to grow, to grow into an opportunity to uh, reach out and grab other communities and bring them into the fold. Therefore, the broader picture of the celebration is the emancipation. The true name for Juneteenth is Emancipation Day or Freedom Day. The Juneteenth word is a loving term. It's something that was used during slavery in order to, as a code word, to let other African Americans know, in fact, that they were free. But now we have gone beyond that point. We have gone to a point of inclusion. Therefore, we have morphed the concept of Juneteenth into the Freedom Festival of Oregon. Mm. We have established a home site for the celebration so that we don't have to go up and down Martin Luther King and other people's property in order to celebrate a history that is open to the whole community. So, in that, we found 
Morning Star Church. Mm. The property of Morning Star Church is beautiful. It is next to a the newest high tech park in mm. the city of Portland. It's Conomos Park, located on 55th in Alberta. Mm. In that, we have also attained the assistance of Wrigley School, which is 80% Hispanic. They're going to join us in this adventure. Hmm. We are establishing along the corridor of 55th and Prescott to 55th in Alberta a car show. Hmm. That car show will have all types of beautiful cars with the big wheels, the things that people love. Inside of uh, Morningstar, we're going to be doing a presentation for the governor and for dignitaries to come in and sit down and support the effort of expansion. We're talking about true community unity. Great. Because what you will find is Asians will be involved. Mm. Hispanics will be involved. Mm -hmm. Caucasians will be involved. Mm. The whole Cully neighborhood will be involved. Mm. So we have redesigned a new parade route. That parade route is staged at 42nd and Killingsworth. It leaves the workforce, which is POIC, travels up 42nd, going south to Alberta, makes a left turn, goes east, a left turn through the community so that all the individuals that live along Alberta will be able to witness and people will be able to comfortably view it, not only from their homes, but if they choose to stand, if they choose to sit, it will be an opportunity to have the involvement of the community in that neighborhood all the way up to 55th and Alberta. Mm. Once it gets there, it turns into uh, the Freedom Festival of Oregon. Mm. Now, this is unique. We have looked for a home for a long time for the celebration. We recognize regentrification. We recognize that the majority of African Americans are in the east section of town. Therefore, we set and I believe God has allowed us to be placed in the center mm -hmm. so that we can bring Gresham into it. We can bring Northeast Portland into it. In any other enclave of African Americans, Americans, period, that would choose to want to become involved into the Fay. So now we have a uniqueness that separates us from the Juneteenth of the past. The Juneteenth, and we appreciate uh, Miss Peoples. We appreciate oh, yeah. Miss Green. Green. Oh yes. We appreciate these ladies. But what we know is that this is not about a legacy. And the only legacy that can be established is the legacy of the celebration, Emancipation Day. This is what the March in Selma is about, Emancipation Day. So if that is the forward push, then we are at the right time, at the right place, and time changed up an hour, so we're ahead of the fray. So on that day, June 19th, mm -hmm. there will be a, a, a kickoff event, not at McMinimins. It will be at Morning Star Church. Morning Star Church, okay. What time? It will begin from 6 o'clock to 10 p.m., where there will be a play, there will be food, there will be an opportunity to learn about the celebration and where we intend to go and establishing a home site for the celebration so no one can say, I did not know where it was or mm -hmm. it slipped mm -hmm. past mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. We have extended, once again, the celebration to the three-day format in which we began with. Uh, unfortunately, during the course of my running for office, it was trimmed down, because I ran for Congress, it was trimmed down to an eight-hour event at Emmanuel Hospital. Mm -hmm. And that is fine with us. Anyway, with me, I support anyone that is giving the information. But the thing that is significant is now we have a chance to bring in those individuals that have always wanted to be a part of it, however, have misunderstood and said that it's a black piece. It is not a black piece. It's an American piece. Well, it, it, in America, there's are. only two freedoms. Okay. One okay. is the 4th of July, 1776. The other is June 19, 1865. But there is no other. So we are going to combine the holiday spirit okay. into okay. a new presentation called the Freedom Festival, Freedom of, Festival Oregon. of Oregon. Okay, now let's see. Now the parade route aspect, what time will it start and when, 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 can they, when are they going to be assembling? The parade will be assembling around 10 and will leave the 42nd, 10, 10, 10 a.m. 10 a.m., okay. It will leave the 42nd uh, designation around 10 uh, 45. 10 45. It okay. will march through the community and up Alberta yep. to the site of the celebration, where okay. once they enter the celebration, it officially becomes a okay. uh, Emancipation Day celebration, and it begins with the prayer. 
Okay. It begins with the singing of the national black national anthem, and it begins with an in, a informative of what is Juneteenth. Then officially throughout the United States at 12 noon, this is done. Okay. And it validates that we are at the right place at the right time with a new home for the celebration forevermore. Okay, good, good. Okay, that's, a, that's the timing aspect of it. Who are now, as far as, was there a phone number, Woody? Yes, uh, you, the, uh, we, are, in touch with you? we are in uh, working with PCC Cascade and establishing our website. It should be up by Wednesday. Okay. Uh, you can contact me at 971 998 5034. Our Good. brother Lynch Bay, you okay. might be, you will have some information on his show, and he will have information. And he's working with you. Lynch yes, is working with he's you. definitely Good. working Good. with Good. us. So put that, give me that number again. Give, give 971 998 5034. Put that on the screen, guys. Put that on the screen for us. I appreciate that. Okay, good. So now, what are, who are some of the participants? You got other participants? Who are some of the participants? We have, as I said before, rigorous school. I, where in this particular school, it's 80% Hispanic, and the middle. Uh, the middle class kids in this school are bilingual. African Americans are bilingual. Little children can speak both languages. Mm, mm. Eighty percent African American. Now, what, tell me this. Now, the kids are going to be looking I mean, around every, there. Excuse me, eighty percent. Well, well, let's talk about some of the attraction uh, as far as the parades. Uh, are they going to? Uh, now, you know, one thing about the, uh, the Hispanic boy, they can really dub up a car, boy. They can put a car. Absolutely. A are they going? Are some of those cars going to be in the parades? Most definitely, those cars are going to be in the parade, and we have a parade coordinator in a brother by the beautiful brother by the name of Jay Love, as well as Marvin Barber. Okay. They are going to be establishing the uh, activities outside. That when I say outside, remember we are on. We begin on 55th and Prescott with right. the car show right. all the way to 55th and Alberta Avenue. Oh, oh okay, okay. So it's and long. The car show. We're gonna have the car show aspect of it. Right. What about some music? We're gonna we're gonna have down there. We're bringing who, 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 uh, from a national standpoint. We're bringing uh, Jesse, Mr. Soul James. Jesse, Mr. Soul Old James. Old James Brown. Old James Brown. Yeah, Old school Jesse, James Brown. Yeah, oh my God. That's Jesse. Oh, that's Jesse, God. Mr. Soul you know, James. I might be a little too young for that. <laughs> but I'll but I'll be there maybe. I'm gonna take it on down. And, and the Bostic family. And the Bostic family. Absolutely. Oh, so fantastic. fantastic. And along with, uh, I believe that it's uh, uh, Cool Breeze. Cool Breeze. Okay. Uh, a little rapping. Kurt Green. Kurt's gonna be there. Uh, and I can't think of the little, little brother's name, but he does a great impression of Prince. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, wow. So it's going to be a fantastic yeah, He's going to be show. dancing. He's going to dance. Oh, it's going to be fantastic. It's what about be, food? You want to have some food stuff available? We folks? have in the kitchen. We have in the uh, kitchen. coordinating the food is uh, uh, Mr. Wayne Streeter. Mr. Wayne Streeter. Along with uh, Mr. J. Love. Mr. So J. they're going to be establishing the kitchen okay they're good. on the site all right good, along good. the parade route there will be vendors at least 100 vendor positions okay good and so that's, if, that's available so if you can call, call you and, and they'll be available yep. you'll be able to give them the numbers right yep number okay, and, good. and cost and cost oh yeah that's that's, that's fair that, that's, that's fair now anyone else that wanted to participate you, you, you like i said they, they can they can still participate is there anyone else, the, the, we are you definitely have boots, open to like resumes and applications okay. being brought from the community in regards to the skills that an individual has to make this a complete success. Okay. And okay. so... And it, by the way, I, you know, i got to ask you, you know, because both of us know, know them real well. And I'm talking about Mrs. Green and Mrs. People. I mean, they are invited if they would like oh, to Oh, they have been. And they, I know, you can, I know you, they can ride in that parade any day they want, right? They can Anytime. definitely join on because one of the things that Mrs. People's always wanted, and when I provided back in, I think it was 2007, is a carnival. So we that. have the possibility of bringing a carnival. You did that to the once event. before. You yes, did, we you, did. You did that once before. I remember that. I remember that. So well, hey, yes, this see, is they're gonna, definitely uh, they definitely have been extended. And you got Kurt. You already got Kurt there. So that, that's gonna be Kurt. no problem. I may have to just go on riding that parade myself. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Well, you, you mind my well, welcome? Well, we we Buffalo soldier uniform. We're gonna put that Buffalo soldier uniform and maybe bring my Marines up there with that flag. There you go. Yep, we yeah. have. We realize this is election year. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so oh, yeah. having said that, those who are uh, running for office have an opportunity to gain the support of the Freedom Festival. And, and as they come aboard, uh, we will extend certain uh, respective uh, opportunities Sounds for them good. to speak Sounds briefly. Good. 
time briefly, ago. Briefly. Not for a long time. Briefly. <laughs> well, I'm a politician. I got to have more time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so on I mean, Saturday. I'm just like you. You, you, you We're going to take the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday is the big day. Though. Saturday is the day that we're rocking, we're cooking, okay, we're all right, smoking, all right, all right. and we're enjoying well, the I tell you park. what. I tell you what. I will, I will invite, if you will, the chairman of the Republican Party to be a part of. Now, Absolutely. I'm, I'm throwing out that invitation to the Democratic chair. Absolutely. And ho hopefully Bob Williams got, might be able to contact the Democratic Party chair and have them part of the part of the parade. W would that be okay? Absolutely. And this go is going to be the largest celebration okay, in the state of Oregon okay. and with a crossover piece that yes. is the forward move forwardness of the celebration. Sounds great. Sounds great. Okay. Wait, this Forever is going to be great. More. And then this is, what day is that now? That's June 19th. June 19th. Is the kickoff. So we're going to have more time to, to announce this again. Right. Right. Okay. June 20th is the, the, the piece that everyone is looking for, the fun, the love, the food. Oh, I heard that. I heard that. I heard Sunday I is to go out there, June the 21st, and that is Jubilee. I heard that. I there heard will be that. churches out there on the, on the site. There will be the Morris Brothers in the event. There will be Islam in the event. And every denomination that recognizes that God is in the center of okay. the Freedom Festival Sounds will good. be there. And, folks, and uh, music. And oh, folks, Lord. And folks, as I indicated before, uh, this is one of the hardest working men <laughs> running around here keeping that date alive. Thank you. really have. I mean, I know that has some, it might, he has some little bumps and whatever. But in all due respect, just like we're getting ready to look at Marion Barry, you know, he, he has some bumps. And then he brushed himself off and came right back to the table. That's right. And, and guess who is going to be is. Grand Marshal? Who's going to be who Larry got? Matthews. Oh, you got to be He's kidding. coming here from Alabama to be in the Juneteenth parade. You got I mean, the Emancipation Day you parade. You got to be Larry Matthews. Larry Matthews. Oh, wow. That's going to be huge. Well, hey, we're going to do something. In fact, if he gets here a little early, maybe a day or so, maybe that Sunday or whatever, we'll have him on the show. A week early, a he's week, coming in. Well, if he comes a week and all, why don't you just schedule that for the we'll. Sunday before? I'll talk okay? to you. Okay, we'll put something together. Okay, good. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to take a short break, and hopefully you can stick around and look at this, this piece. Oh, I'd time? love to. I love, I love history. Okay, good. We're going to take a short break, folks, so we can make sure that we can play as much as we can of that tape, and uh, then we'll be right back with you, okay? Can we do that, guys? We'll just take a short break. Sounds great. Okay, looking good. All right, we'll be right back with you. You are watching Oregon Voters Digest. This program can be seen again on these channels on these dates and times. Tell a friend. Welcome back, folks. Hey, you're back, and, and hey, you got the first half. If you haven't, you know, you can check it out on YouTube. The address is already there. Tell your friends, tell your family. Juneteenth is right around the corner, and there's a, quite a bit of activities. And by the way, we offer any other group that's just wanting to participate to come on the show and, and educate the people about what they're doing. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about, you know, because it's, it's what it's all about. It's about diversity, and it's about inclusion. Okay, what we're going to do this time around, we're going we're gonna to show a certain segment of, uh, of Marion Barrier's book, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to have a little discussion with the two guys that are sitting here, one of which happened to be from Washington, D.C., who knew Marion real well. Okay, take care. Now it is my pleasure to introduce Mocha Ochoa from the Oracle Group, who will introduce our speakers this evening. Again, welcome. Hi, thank you so much for coming out in this weather, D.C., to receive our mayor for life, right? All right. Okay, so... 
as he takes the stage, I don't want him standing for too long, I'll just read a little bit of his bio here. It's Marion Barry Jr. Wait, but first, first, before I say that, I'd like to thank the library system, DC library system. Thank you for always being such a great partner in, putting, in helping us put together diverse events like this. So much love to the DC library system. So, uh, Marion Barry Jr. is a former four-term mayor of Washington, D.C. He has dedicated 40 years of his life to public service. Living by the motto, always fighting for the people, the son of a sharecropper and born in Mississippi, he joined the Civil Rights Movement and was elected the first chairman of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. His elected career in Washington, D.C. has spanned from 1971 to the present. He currently serves as a council member for the, D for the District of Columbia and lives in Washington, D.C. with his only son, Christopher. Let's welcome our mayor for life. All right, all right. And his wonderful co-author, Mr. Omar Tyree, who almost needs no introduction, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about him. New York Times, this doesn't say New York Times, but it's five times New York Times best-selling author. Omar Tyree is the winner of the 2001 NAACP Image Award for Outstanding Literary Work, Fiction, and the 2006 Phyllis Wheatley Literary Award for Body of Work in Urban Fiction. He has published more than 20 books on African-American people and culture, including five New York Times best-selling novels. He is a popular national speaker, a strong advocate of urban literacy, born and raised in Philadelphia. He lives in Charlotte, North Carolina. You can learn more about him at omartyree.com. Warm DC welcome. Okay, a little bit about this evening. It's going to be very interactive. So we're just gonna start with some questions just to open the evening up and then it's on you. What questions you have for, you know, our mayor for life and Omar Tyree, bring them on down. You're welcome. Is that all right? Okay. Okay, well, welcome. Welcome, welcome. It's, uh, sorry, a little more function here. Um, it's, it's a pleasure to be on stage with both of you. Um, with, uh, once this, we knew this book was coming out, as a matter of fact, I saw Charmaine in the audience with Straybor Books. I think I was coming to your office to talk to you about Sister Soldier's book. She was coming to DC. And you said, well, I've got a book coming. All right, well, that trumps everything. So, <laughs> so why a memoir? Why now? First of all, let me say good evening. And welcome to the library. And welcome to Mayor for Life book signing. <laughs> Let me tell you a little story about that. Uh, Ken Cummins, who was loose lips at City Paper, he used to be kind of innovative. He would call me uh, Mac Barry and F. Lady Mac Barry. And one day he said, Mayor, Marion Barry, Mayor for Life. I rejected that because it reminded me of Papa Doc in Haiti. And I didn't want to be connected with that despot and that uh, dictator at all. But as we went around the city, people say, you're the mayor forever. You're the forever mayor. You know, you, you're the best man we ever had. And all these kind of things. And so Mayor for Life started taking off, and I embraced it. Because it really is a story of my life. I spent over 50 years of my seven, eight years in public service, in civil rights, human rights, job training, managing DC government for 16 years. It, DC government is an $11 billion corporation, and 40,000 employees, uh, and people talk about Marion Barry, mm -hmm. who he is, what he did, all this, but nobody talks about who he is. 
and I decided to talk about who he is. And I'm the only one can write about who I am, because I'm the one who's given this skin. I was talking to my the other day, and part of the reason I wrote the book also was to educate people about the great things we were able to accomplish during my, my lifetime. Not just in civil rights, but in terms of mayor for 16 years. Let me just say that Washington has become a one mayor, one, I mean one term mayor town. Starting with Sharon Pat Kelly, I, I did a little thing with her, beat her up a little bit. And uh, then you had Agent Fenty, one term. Vince Gray, one term. And I'm supporting Mira Bowser. And I told Mira the other day, if you don't listen to some of us who've been there, you're going to be a one term there, too. <laughs> Simple as that. Simple as that. And she's been listening. Uh, we had a strategy session last Monday uh, up at uh, Beer Lightfoot's house uh, in, on Calamere. And so part of it was to educate, other part of it was to inspire, to give hope to those who've lost hope, to give strength to those who've lost strength. Because the number one word in the dictionary that describes leadership is courage. And courage is in my DNA. No question about that. Resilience, uh, stick to itness. Uh, don't give up. You know, my own philosophy is that if you don't get in a race, you surely won't win it. If you get in it, you just might win it. And so why not get in the race? I also have a philosophy that there's a 50% chance of a person saying yes and a 50% chance saying no. So why not go for the goal in terms of that? So I got a lot of those kinds of things in the book that we talk about. Uh, then we talk about it's a political primer uh, for young uh, African-American elected officials. And one thing that's not in the book, if I thought about it, it would have been in the book, and that is this crop of young African-American men and women who get elected to office. What's missing, they're not going through struggle. They're not going through struggle. And when you're not going through struggle, you don't understand what struggle is all about. You know, and everybody who's born poor didn't elect to be born poor. God decided that they were born into poverty, and therefore a lot of us are fighting to stop people from victimizing them, blaming them for their plight uh, when they weren't responsible for being born there. So that's an overall. It's a, a easy read, Omar. You did a hell of a job. Let's give him a round of applause. And Omar is a fiction writer, which means he can put life to things that don't have much life in them. But he also tends to go beyond that sometimes. And a couple of times, not more than a couple, maybe a dozen times, I said, Omar, you can't write that. I could live in this town after you, I get my book out. I can't do all that. That's tell, tell this point up to this point. The book is also honest. It's a truthful book. Some people say it's too truthful. There's no such thing as being too truthful. Truth is truth. Dr. King said, truth, crest to the ground, shall rise again. And I'll tell you a story, a little bit of it's in the book, the, the how it came to the truth situation. When I was growing up in Memphis, my mother, let me talk a little bit about my beginnings. People don't understand what a shotgun house is. It's a house that if you shoot a shotgun through it, it goes straight through to the back. And it didn't have any electricity, didn't have any running water. We used kerosene lamps and candles. It had a tin roof. Any of you all ever live in a house with a tin roof? You know what I mean. When it rains hard, it's, you can't sleep. Because that damn thing to be bounding, bounding, etc. And my mother and father went to the third or fourth grade. They were sharecroppers. And uh, that's where the white man would sell the cotton seeds at a price high, and he paid for them, and sell, buy the cotton back 
at a price lower than he's going to get for it. It was a very exploitive system. I have two sisters, and my mother decided she wouldn't leave the farm. My grandmother had already gone to Chicago because we had a great black migration where millions of, of, of black Americans uh, went to Chicago, Detroit, and, and out looking for freedom. They didn't find it, but they went there. And they didn't. And so my mother decided, I'm tired of having babies. I'm tired of working 10 hours a day. And I'm tired of picking two or three hundred pounds of cotton. She could pick about 300, 350. Can you imagine that? 350 pounds of cotton in one day? That's a hell of a picker. She had two, two cotton sacks, and she was going from side to side. Like that. And my grandmother had already gone to Chicago because she was born in Mississippi also. And she sent my mother Greyhound bus fare for me and one of my sisters, because my other sister, older sister, was already up there. My father found it and took it from her because he didn't want to leave. He waited to that miserable life, I guess. And so I grew up without a natural father in my house. I had some good stepfathers, but not a natural father. So I can identify with a lot of these guys out here that don't have a natural father in the house. And uh, he scuffed around in some white person's kitchen to try to uh, get enough money to go across the river to West Helena, Arkansas, where we had an uncle, Walter Towns, who worked at the lumber company. And she scuffed around again, some white folks' kitchen, and et cetera. It was hard work. And got to Memphis, because we had relatives there. And we, and there we got stuck in Memphis. I'm not so sure I could have survived Chicago. I, I'm not so sure about that. And so that's the beginning of the tough struggle I had. If you've not been poor, you can identify with it up here, but you can't identify with it in here. I mean, being poor, and I can, I can use it in the library. Being poor is a bitch, I tell you. <laughs> Hope you understand. I'm not being down women because I had 50% of my cabinet were female in my administration. So don't go get carried away. And one other final thing, then we get back to questions. We have a lot of Barry haters in the press. And a lot of them work at the Washington Post. <laughs> we have Barry haters at the Washington Post who didn't even read the book right. and wrote a book review on it. Can I, 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 I even do that. I read what somebody else said and took that. That's not good journalism, is it? That's, that's BS. That's what it is. So that's the beginning of it all. I'm having a good time uh, with the book. I'm going to do a, a lot of book signings in Washington. Uh, we should have launched it in Washington, but I wasn't in charge of that. <clears throat> yeah, we launched it in New York. And so uh, thank you all again for coming. And we may run out of books. I don't know. I, I hope we do. <laughs> That's a problem you like to have. <laughs> but seriously, the people in New York don't quite understand Marion Barry's popularity and favorabilities in this region. I'm 81% favorable in, in, in the black community and 52% overall. The only person close to me is Jack Evans, which is 35%. And so we're going to sell as many books as we can in this area because it's a story that's real. A lot of people are going through some of the same things I went through in terms of my personal life. And this book is instructive as to how you can get knocked down, you can fall down, or push yourself down. But it's not the issue. The issue is getting up.
is getting up. And I'm an expert on getting up. I'm an expert on getting up. I'm getting up. I also believe, and I'm going to stop, that a setback is a setup for a comeback. All right. You know, that's the kind of thing you have to do. And part of what's happening in the black community is that even though we are physically in of slavery, a lot of black folks are still psychologically enslaved. Enslaved. So we got the book, hopefully, with freedom up. That it's all right to be courageous. It's all right to fight hard. And one final point is that everything that African Americans Colors, uh, Negroes, and all those names they gave us. We got it through fighting. Think about it. The Civil Rights Act, John Lewis and me and some other people went to jail, got wound. Voting rights, Selma, Alabama. We fought for it. Frederick Douglass said, and it's in the book, that Frederick Douglass said in 1848, Power can seize nothing without a demand. It never has, and it never will. Thank you very much. All right. All right. So such as the book says that this is an incredible story. So how, how did, Omar, how did you get involved in this project? And did it seem intimidating at first? And so first, how did this happen? Right. Well, he likes to call me a fiction writer, but I have a degree in print journalism. And so I wrote over 300 newspaper articles in Washington, D.C. for the Capitol Spotlight and the News Dimensions. And I interviewed him. I started using that moment. Yeah. <laughs> and I interviewed him when he took over the Ward 8 position uh, in the early 90s. He don't remember that because I was some young whippersnapper then, so he didn't remember it. But that's the first thing. I've write facts about the people. And then the fiction books are based on all the facts that we need to deal with. And so Zane, who's a fiction writer, uh, asked me, Omar, would you, you know, want to be involved in writing the autobiography of Marion Barry? And I almost jumped over the phone. What? Mm -hmm. Definitely. You know, because I had been trying to write nonfiction books for years, but you had a lot of people that they would say they wanted to do something and not do it. And so I went back to writing what I typically wrote because I had the power to finish what I wanted to finish. And so Marion Barry was serious about doing his book. Now, they didn't tell me that they tried to do the book before with a person who's not as professional as I am, and he didn't do the job. And so I didn't find that out until later on, you know. And so I said, okay, well, y'all should have hired me the first time, right. and we'd have had this book done four or five years ago. Right. Okay. But in the process, I came with an outline when I first sat down with him. You know, I did my homework. And I knew who he was, I knew who he'd been through, and I'm not gonna sit down in front of the man without being prepared. And so I had like a five, six page outline, and he looked at it and said, well, this is impressive. And so I said, yeah, I'm a journalist. I'm not gonna show up with no questions and no platform for what I wanted to do. And so once I sat down, he liked who I was, and he said, oh, I, this is pretty good. And I told him, I said, look here, I'm not here to write any you know, uh, ridiculous story about you that beat you down. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to protect your legacy, and I'm here to tell you a full story because I understand what you've been through. Yeah. And I understand who you are, and this gives me an opportunity to protect you for the rest of your life because when people start talking bad about Marion Barry, I always have to correct them and say, no, did you know he did this, 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 and this? And then they're like, oh! You know, so I'm not the kind of black man who is going to make excuses and run away from a good fight. So I told Marion Barry, I said, I'm a Philadelphian and you got the right guy on your team. Okay, and then we went to work and we started battling about what we wanted to keep in the book and what we wanted to do, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, we did a book that he wanted to put out and it established a whole lot of who he is as a person, not just the incidents that the media wanted to cover all the time. And so you got to understand that he was in his early 30s before he even got to D.C. And so that's half his life before he even got here, before you even knew him. 
And in that half-life, he was already a master's degree in chemistry, almost a PhD, got involved with civil rights, had a high school uh, rebellion against the newspapers because the white newspaper guys were getting more money and bikes, and he figured the black kids wasn't, so he told the little kids to strike and not get, and this, he's 15 years old. And so this is the kind of man that we're dealing with before you even knew him in D.C. And so a lot of times they talk about what comes first, the chicken or the egg, and I always say the chicken makes the eggs. And so this man was a strong chicken before he did anything in D.C. because that was a part of his fabric of character. And so he wanted to continue serving the people over and over and over again, no matter how old he is. He's 78 right now, still serving the people, and that's just a part of who he is. And I'm happy to be able to put that together for him. All right, awesome, awesome. Uh, also, um, uh, the word people appears over 900 times. <laughs> in that book, because it's about people. Uh -huh. And a lot of politicians really don't particularly like people. They like the job, but not the people. Mm -hmm. I love the job, but more importantly, I love the people. Simple as that. Okay, okay, awesome. So how long did it take for you to gel? Do you think, did you have to have a process where you had to really get to know each other before you started on the book? Or what was that writing process like? It, well, again, I'm a journalist, so I'm, I wasn't afraid of them, you know. So I didn't come in here. You, I, I had to ask them the questions. I had a list of questions that we had to go through. And, you know, some of the questions, you know, well, Omar, I don't remember that when we got to interview some of the people that was in my office. And so he had a list of about 20 people, <laughs> which immediately I'm like, oh, I, I don't want to interview 20 people. This is your story. Omar, you're going to interview them because they were part of my office and they remember and they got to draw my memory. And so I had to sit there and interview people for hours at a time so he can remember those things. And so it was a real long process, you know, because I'm used to doing things fast and quick. And so he also wanted to see me in person. So we couldn't do any phoners. I had to keep driving up to D.C. to sit with him in person. Now, he's still working in the office, and so I would drive up and sit in his office for three hours because there's still people that want to see him. So I'm sitting there reading stuff, the papers, and every day, hi, Omar, hi, Omar, people going through the, I'm sitting here thinking, this is crazy. And then I get maybe an hour or two when I finally get, he's tired, worn out, and so we had to do late nights, early mornings, weekends, you know, and I'm still up here. At one time, he's like, Omar, you need to just stay in D.C. for a couple of months. And I'm thinking, look, man, I got a family. I'm not staying a couple of months in D.C. Man, what are you talking about? And so it was, it was a rough process. Well, folks, as you man, can see, as you can see, Mary and Barry for life, Mary for life. I mean, it, it's, it's quite a book, and uh, there's a lot of background. And uh, again, I say we had the opportunity to have a couple of videotapes of him, and you're seeing a certain segment of that. Uh, we will play this in its entirety. Uh, however, we're just gonna we're gonna go on and take a little some, take a little time out right at this point in time, and and we're gonna we have a little small discussion for the for the last few minutes of the show with someone who knew Marion Barry back in D.C. and I'm talking about uh, um, uh, Lynch Bay, and we're gonna spend a little time with him. So Lynch, what do you what do you think? Oh, Let's I, talk talk a little bit about some of the things. Uh, uh, that first you know off, about I, I lived in Marion Barry's ward. I lived in Ward Eight. Okay. Um, I just put a calendar out. Okay. And the calendar I put out uh, had Marin Barry with our leader in there mm -hmm. because the way that we got our property was uh, uh, through Marin Barry. He helped us. Uh, when Marin Barry got locked up mm -hmm. for the drugs, he didn't go see the girl for drugs. Mm -hmm. He went to see her for something else, but they wanted to set him up. Mm -hmm. But the reason why we call him Mayor for Life, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for Marin Barry, the youth programs, et cetera, would never existed. The way that people are living now in Washington, D.C. was because of Myron Barry. Now, a lot of us are not concerned about his personal life mm -hmm. because the highest heights are gained by those who reach the greatest depth. Sometimes you've got to go to your lowest to gain your highest. Mm -hmm. right. But the work that this brother did in Washington, D.C. and is still doing, mm -hmm. if he wouldn't have been there, Washington, D.C. right now would be still like Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. What I mean by Portland, Oregon, uh, we just had an uh, election not too long ago, mm -hmm. and you are the only person, you and this man here are the only uh, people, uh, Asiatic people of African descent, that talked about voting. Mm -hmm. And what I'm happy about, sitting with the both of you, 
is I'm going to show you some of Murray's methods of application. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do here in Portland, Oregon. Don't say it. Don't tell everybody. I'm not going to tell everybody, yeah, yeah, but I'm going to tell it to y'all. Let's slow down. Not we, right now. We're on TV now. We want to hold we that go, No, I'm not going to tell them that part of Okay, all right, all right, okay. But okay. we're going to back the buses up. <laughs> okay, okay. And we're going to put those of African descent and those who support whatever official that we have there. That's what you guys were doing. We'll back buses up. Okay. Load them up mm -hmm. and take them to the pole. I hear you. Now, the reason why Marin Barry, once he came home and... Uh, he ran for office again, and the reason why he won mm -hmm. is because what he did in the city. Mm -hmm. See, we're not talking about his personal life. Mm -hmm. This brother did so many things. Now, I'm 64 years old, mm -hmm. and everybody, I, you know, I was working in the government because of my family for after school, mm -hmm. but most of those Asiatics and European in Washington, D.C., he had a program, and a program he called Pride. And what he did with this pride program, he cleaned all the alleys up, hmm. you know, cleaned all the streets up. Hmm. And those uh, young people that was in school, after school, he gave them jobs so they could have some finance. Man, there's too much to say about this, man. Hmm. Hmm. And he remind me of you, too. Well, thank you. I appreciate you know, so that. I like to give him honor. Mm -hmm. And the great work. That's why I got them tapes. I couldn't wait to get them I here to see. Oh, and I mean, we I... have some more coming on him. Okay, okay. You okay. know, so I just wanted to share. And that also his book, right? I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna probably we're gonna get the books here too. Matter of fact, I'm gonna make pick... sure I get both of y'all. Appreciate books. that. Now, can he pick those up at Powell Bookstore? Or can we just do a book signing? They say here. I'm gonna have them sent to me. That sounds good. You know, okay. just yeah, like I had tell... the tapes sent yeah, to we, me. Yeah, we'll have a we'll you have know? a book signing, and you can you can we talk a little bit more about it. Yeah, because because in Washington D.C. It, it's, it's a political town. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. And uh, even those that was incarcerated, mm -hmm. we have an organization in, in D.C. called Returning Citizens. Citizens. You Returning know. Citizens. Not ex-cons. No, not, not ex-cons. Citizens. Returning Citizens. Okay. Amazing. And all of the returning, I don't care what their past was, right. what kind of record they have, right. they can vote. Right. Absolutely. Wow. They go down to the poll and vote because they're free. Yes. Right. You know, they're right. no longer locked up. Right. Why I keep holding someone right. for what they did in the past? Mm -hmm. Man mm -hmm. can grow. Mm -hmm. Man can be born again. Mm -hmm. Being born again means changing your thought pattern. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. And that brother Marin Byrne, he said, that's why we call him Mad for Life. Yes. Because he ran Washington, D.C. Wow. You mm -hmm. know, uh, we had a, uh, we went before city council in Washington, D.C., and Marin Byrne set it up for the returning of citizens. You know, and uh, we went there and, and it was successful. And you look at the polls in Washington, D.C., I mean, it's three or four blocks long. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, people is in line, get up waiting six or seven, to waiting to go in there to vote. And that's what we have to do here. It's only 2% of us here mm -hmm. of, of African descent. Mm -hmm. But that's what we have to do. This is what y'all are doing. Mm -hmm. We have to wake the people up. That's mm -hmm. right. Politically. Mm -hmm. That's right. Not mm -hmm. just religiously, socially, and economically. Mm -hmm. We got to wake up politically. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm so honored to be mm -hmm. able to sit in the presence of these two political figures. Well, we really appreciate Thank it. In fact, we appreciate the fact that you're now living and residing in the state of Oregon. That's right. And, um, and, and in all due respect, it, it, again, you know, we, we call it a, kind of a major white city, but in all due respect, it's a citizen city made up of many Americans, some of which happens to be African Americans, Asian, Black. We, we got to have that inclusion, and that's Absolutely. one of the reasons why I've got uh, I've got Woody here because he's been fighting for a long time. I've been kind of like in the same boat to a certain degree, and uh, it's, it, a lot of times when you get that small numbers, everybody's fighting, you know, like a bunch of crabs, you know, in a in a, in yeah. a bucket, if you will. You understand what I'm saying? And then, one, yeah, once you get up there a little bit, you know, someone else will pay them to go and pull you back. That's right. And you that's know, really I met what him. Mm -hmm. I met him because after Juneteenth last year, mm -hmm. I said, I want to get involved in this. Yes, right. I right. said, because I, you know, I, I, I see what was taking place, and we just had like five or six cars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, this year coming up, and I didn't have to say anything, but he came in with the freedom, <laughs> with the freedom mark. Wow. And I honor it, and I'm happy to well, be I, here. I appreciate that. And, and, yes, then, and what he knows, I, you know, sure, I'm a registered Republican, but one of the main reasons why I'm a registered Republican is to the history of black folks. Lincoln, Lincoln, the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, we can build on that. Mm -hmm. You know, in all, in all due respect, when I, when I hear about the de Democrats uh, during that, those days, they were Klansmen. Mm -hmm. And a lot of folks don't understand that history. But for some strange reason, as black folks, we just all jump into the bag of Democrats without even questioning that history. Mm -hmm. And it's just a respect. And I realize, I see all of the, the, the negativism with, with, a, with a number of those Republicans that are sitting up here now about the, you know, this, this, that, and the other. But that's just a few as far as I'm concerned. I know who I am.
-hmm. And that's a very important piece. But I can cite the same thing on the D side, you know. So, so the bottom line, we got to get down to the point where we are inclusive. We ain't That's going right. anywhere. We're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. Anybody, I don't know. We're not going nowhere. We, we are somebody. Mm -hmm. and, and I think there's a movement here at this point in you time. You know, probably. I signed up as Democrat. That's right, right. And I signed up as this because I remember the debates of uh, right. Lincoln and Douglas. Right, right. And I know some of the things like Abraham Lincoln named after his, uh, his, his grandfather. Right, right. His grandmother named is Bathsheba. Yes. You know, his sister name is yes. Sarah. Yes. You know, we know the history of him. Right. But when John Ware Booth, <laughs> yes. you know, killed him, yes. you know, that was the thought of the Republican Party. Yeah, it wasn't yeah, the Democratic yeah. Party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. once... Uh, he died, then that thought that he had, because mm -hmm. he said, I free the, if I have to free the slaves to save the union, I would do that. Mm -hmm. That was a different thought pattern. Yeah, right, right, so exactly. whatever you're trying to do, because right. in our organization, we have brothers that are Democrats, right. and, we have brothers that are Republicans, we have brothers that what, you, you see? So if you're trying to do something in this town, whatever it is, I'm going to give you my full right, support right, 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 and right. get out here, like, right. like what I'm working with him right. now. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, we're oh, getting yeah, into oh, the community yeah. yes. and the grass, we let the people know. It's very, so whatever it's very I can do to represent you, because I don't see nobody else talking about politics. Okay. So right, I don't right, care yeah. if it's Democrat, but whatever you're doing, we're going to back them buses up. Okay, I appreciate that. Right. Well, hey, I'm sure you enjoyed the show. You got about another minute. Another quick announcement. You said you guys are having meetings, Woody? Yeah, you know we where? have meetings uh, at St. Jude's located on 55th and Prescott. It's sitting okay. right on the corner across okay. from regular school at 10 a.m. Every week? Every Thursday. Every Thursday. And we'll double up when we get into okay. April. Sounds great. Well, folks, there you are. There's the show, and we're going to continue with this show uh, probably the next round, if not yes, that, uh, or, or the round afterwards. But as you know, I never announce anything. <laughs> I mean, you, what you see, what you get, okay? Amen. And I try to give you a real good show. Okay, with that, take care. Have a good evening, and we appreciate it very much that um, you, 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 that you were with us and you, you were able to look at some of the facts. And, uh, and again, like I said, I sort of, I sort of compare it that with... Uh, uh, the, the time that John Kitzhopper spent. He spent three terms. The man had to have done something good, Absolutely. at least during that three terms. He got caught up in a situation that, as far as I'm concerned, I have my reservations about that because we're right in the middle of politics. Right, right in the middle of politics. And so, and he was a Democrat. But, but the fact of the matter is, but he stayed there three months. I, I've got my own version in terms of how I think what, ha what really happened, but we'll get it another point in time. Yes, and sir. by the way, you got two veterans here, too. Yeah, yeah. He's another veteran Vietnam over here. Veteran. Vietnam vet. Yeah, it's a right, right. Vietnam vet. I'm a Vietnam vet. By the way, go out for your benefits. Call somebody. Get down. Get to work. Hey, have a good one. I'll see you next week. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.